Hey, it's Hope and Larry. We're in the kitchen. Let's make some lentil burgers. Hi, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And every week we come to you on Under the Median where we talk about practical frugality. And today we have a special treat for you. Several of you have been asking about my homemade bean burgers. And today we're going to talk lentil burgers. And guess what? They're going to cost you 15 cents a burger to make. Let's get started. Hey, we are in the downstairs kitchen today. The house has two kitchens. This is the downstairs kitchen, which would have been the original summer kitchen. Some of you have been asking about my 1948 Magic Chef stove. There she is. The owner of the home that we bought the home from was 90 years old. She and her husband bought that stove when he got back from World War II. That was the first thing they bought together. It came with the house. And not only did I keep the stove, but I actually used the stove every single day. Let's talk about lentil burgers. Several of you have been asking recently about my uh, plant-based burgers, meatballs, my homemade tortillas, things like that. So we're gonna start out today by telling you about the lentil burgers. This is two pounds of cooked lentils. Lentils nearly always have grit on them. They just, it's the nature of a lentil and they grow close to the ground. And when they actually harvest them, it's really hard to get all the grit out of there. So make sure before you cook lentils that you always rinse them really well. Now lentils are small enough that if you put them in a traditional colander, trust me, I know you're gonna wind up with little lentils all over your countertop or in your sink. You need a fine mesh strainer to rinse the lentils in before you put them in the pot. You're gonna put them in a large pot. Uh, two pounds of lentils measures a smidge, a smidge over four cups. It's not even quite maybe four and a quarter cups. So you can put those uh, two pounds of lentils into a pan and then add seven and a half cups of water. Bring that to a boil, and as soon as it comes to a boil, bring it down to a low simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. I say check it after 15 minutes. Most of the water should be absorbed when they are fully cooked, and you'll see that like the texture, you can still, they're not mushy, they're definitely tender, they're cooked through, but they're not like one mushy mess. So that is kind of the texture that you're looking for when the lentils get done. If there's a little bit of water left in the bottom of the pan, that's okay because we're gonna add some flour in a little bit here to kind of uh, make sure that that's a binder and holds them all together. To your two pounds of cooked lentils, you are going to add three tablespoons of soy sauce. Yes, you're adding some sodium by adding the soy sauce. It's about 25, 2600 milligrams of sodium and that's divided among 28 bean burgers. So you're only adding about 100 milligrams of sodium to each bean burger. We are not going to add any additional salt, however, because we just added all that soy sauce. You need two tablespoons of liquid smoke. This is what is going to give it that smoky flavor that would be present with, um, with meat, but of course there's not gonna be meat in these burgers. Then we're going to add some spices. All right, starting from here. I have it written down on a piece of paper. I have a tablespoon of salt-free seasoning mix. Um, I really like the salt-free seasoning that they sell from Costco. It's Kirkland brand. We are not Costco members, but you can get it from Amazon, and I'll make sure that there's a link in the description of this video. And speaking of links, don't worry about writing down everything that I'm telling you because uh, what I did was I made a blog post over at the website that shows photos and has the recipe and there's a link in that post where you're going to be able to download a free PDF of the recipe when we get done here. We have two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one tablespoon of garlic powder, two tablespoons of onion powder. Now, yes, it seems like we're adding a lot of seasoning, but remember, I mean, basically you have a blank slate with the cooked lentils. So you're adding a whole lot of flavor. And then you're gonna add two tablespoons of chili powder. Now, I'm gonna mix this in. As I mix it in, I'm gonna tell you that this recipe is incredibly giving. I've made it with different kinds of flavors. If you have some uh, salsa in your house, that is like a fruit flavored salsa, like a mango salsa or a peach salsa, or even a pineapple salsa, 
I have put that in these bean burgers. It turns out really nicely. I add a little bit of like toasted coconut or something to it when I do that to give it kind of that island flavor. And, um, and they turn out very nicely. But you have to remember when you're adding the salsa, you're adding a little bit more um, liquid too. So you're probably gonna have to add a little bit more of the flour to stick it all together. All right, now I am going to grab, I'm gonna grab a potato masher and just mash these beans up. You can take maybe, mm, maybe half of this mixture out if you want, and you can do this in the food processor if you want, but I mean, it doesn't take very long. You still want some texture from the lentils. You don't want them all smashed up, but you want a little bit smashed because it helps them to hold together a little bit better when you're done with making the burgers. All right, so we have our mixture here. It's got a, just, I think, just enough liquid in it that they're going to hold together. Now, we're gonna stir in, uh, in the recipe I say up to one and a half cups of flour. Really depends on how much um, like liquid you have in your finished mixture. I don't think this is even gonna, this is a cup of flour. I don't think it's even gonna take a cup. So I'm gonna put in just enough flour. You can see it's starting to come together. You can see the mixture starting to like form. You want a mixture at the end. You want all this flour incorporated. And you want a mixture that's gonna hold together. And to be honest with you, usually I take my wedding ring off and I just get my hands in there like a good old fashioned meatloaf, guys. Cause <laughs> that's why God made hands. He gave you two hands in order to mix food. It's just true. Now, once you have a mixture, that will hold together. I'm gonna to get my hand in there and I'm gonna to try to form a ball with it and see if it'll form a ball. That's nice. All right, so you can see this almost needs a little bit more. I'm gonna have Larry turn around and grab me about half a cup of water. And we're gonna add, literally, we're just gonna add a little bit of water to this because it's not holding together super well. All right, we added that half a cup of water. Let's see if that kind of got us to the consistency that we're looking for. You don't want it too dry. Here's the problem. If it's too dry, then your finished burgers will crack. You almost want it, you want to err on the side of having a little bit more liquid than having it too dry. All right, now I'm going to put it in my hand and see if it'll form a ball. Ooh, that's nice. This is exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's going to hold its shape when you lightly push it together with hands. See, I told you, God made hands so we could mix things. All right, I am going to move that over there to form our burgers. That's all that goes in it, guys. That's the whole thing. Now, I did a cost breakdown analysis for the burgers on the post that I put on the website, but I'm gonna tell you that it came up to $4 for everything that is in here. I figured the, um, the cost of the lentils at $1.25 a pound because you can get them at um, Dollar Tree for $1.25 a pound. These lentils, I buy them in bulk the last time I bought them. And yes, I know they're gonna be more when we go back. <laughs> in November, I got them for, I think they were about 70 cents a pound well, when I bought them for tw in 25 pound bags uh, from the Amish store. We are, by the way, gonna head back to the Amish store in a few weeks and we'll make sure we tell you about our finds that we get there. All right, so pack it down into, a measuring cup, that's a half a cup. Make sure your hands are clean, guys. And literally, you're gonna pile it on here and you're gonna use your hand once again and you're gonna form that into a burger shape. All right, that was actually a little bit too dry. I had to add another mm, quarter cup-ish of water and then a little bit more flour, probably another quarter cup of flour. And then we're gonna mold these into one half cups and all you do is put it on there and you see how that looks just like a burger. You're going to make the burger shape and then that is going to make about 24 to 28 burgers or so. I usually get about 15 burgers on each of these large baking pans. I should mention that you need to make sure that your baking pan is lined. It either needs to be lined 
with one of these silicone liners. This is my favorite silicone liner. I've had it for three years and I have used it really, really hard. I got a set of them from Amazon and I'll make sure there's a link to them in the description of the video. You can also use parchment paper if you don't have the uh, silicone pan liners. But this will allow you to have it not stick to the surface without adding any oil at all. You'll notice we added zero oil to this recipe. All right, we're gonna fill these pans, get them in the oven. You're gonna put them at 375 for 15 minutes. Once they're browned on one side, it's like flipping a cookie, guys. If you try to flip it too early, you're gonna be able to tell because it's not gonna hold together. So when it's browned on one side, you're gonna flip it over, usually about 15 minutes into the cooking process, cook it another 15 minutes, take it out of the oven, and as they cool, they will get a little bit harder in texture and you can freeze them for up to six months. They freeze really, really well. If, you're, if your burgers aren't holding together, try smashing the lentils just a little bit more. You still want some of those lentils in there whole for texture, but it will hold together a little bit more if you actually have smashed it a little bit more. Once again, make sure your hands are clean, guys, and just use your hands. Basically, I put them into the, into the cup into the measuring cup, make sure that it's packed down in that measuring cup. That'll help it hold its shape. I unmold it onto my hand, smash it into like a baseball size and put it on the pan. It looks like we're gonna get, um, we might get 20 of them. I realized once I started making this video and grabbed the half cup measuring cup that I usually make a third cup measuring cup, which would be why I get 28 burgers out of this. <laughs> so we're not gonna get 28 burgers today, guys, but these will be nice, large, generous burgers, which makes Larry super happy because he loves the lentil burgers. Uh, these are one <laughs> of my favorites. Yes, indeed. Very good, they're very good. We're gonna get these babies in the oven. When they're done, we're gonna get them out and show you what they look like. Okay, so I'm in the upstairs kitchen and uh, this is our electric oven. I'm gonna make sure it's at 375 which it is, and uh, I'll turn that on, and we'll give that a good 10 minutes to warm up, and then we'll bring the lentils up here and bake them. Okay, we've got 21 burgers ready to go into the oven. So the oven's set, as I said, at 375. We'll cook them for 15 minutes, and then flip them, and cook them for an additional 15 minutes, giving them a total of 30 minutes in the oven, right home. Yep, 21 burgers. These are slightly larger than the ones I usually make. If I were dedicated to getting that 28 burgers out of that two pounds of lentils, I literally would go through and take a little bit off of each lentil burger to create a few more burgers, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm good with 21. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, they're going in the oven. 375. And then I will, when I, when I, um, Turn them over. I'll go ahead and switch these trays out to make sure that they're evenly browned on the bottom side. Okay, very good. Then. Okay, so it's been about actually about 20 minutes. We realized they're thicker, so they needed more time, right? Oh, right. So you're gonna know when they're ready to turn. If you legit, just like if you were turning a cookie over, you'll see that slightly browned on one side. When you turn them over, you might have to reform them just a little bit if they get a little messed up. It's really not a problem to flip them all over. You're gonna switch the trays uh, different on the... the yep, oh. we're just gonna swap the trays swap so that they yeah. evenly cook. Yep, okay, very good. Okay, they are out of the oven. Um, don't cook them too long because then they will dry out. It's okay for them to be just a little bit not quite as firm as you would expect in the center because as they cool, they'll firm up as they cool. We're gonna grab some English muffins, toast them, and show you what they look like with all the fixings. So we, we got we got company here. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Good day. <laughs> so... Hope is getting one of right. them ready here. There's an art to this. Tell oh, us what you man. like on your burgers. I'm going with onion and a little barbecue sauce. Pickles? Um, maybe pickles, but definitely a little salsa on it too. You don't want, you don't want like sloppy amounts of salsa because then it'll just leak out all over. <laughs> all right, and we went with English muffins tonight. <laughs> I got a lot of onion on there. All right, are we ready? Here's what it looks like. Oh man, does that look good. Okay, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> and? A little bit. 
And the verdict is? Mm. <laughs> mm. It's really good. Okay. Well, All right. We gotta get ours ready now. Thanks for watching, guys. We see you on Monday. Remember the recipe with more photos and also a free downloadable PDF is available. There'll be a link to that post on the website. I'll put it in the description of this video. You wanna head over there and grab that next.